intelligence, we are able to extract, okay, we are able to extract the trial balance, okay, from which we would prepare our reports. At the end of the session, we expect that students can identify and post their transactions, okay, into their respective accounts in the ledgers from the day books. We expect students to be conversant with the types of ledgers that we have and to balance and close off the accounts in the ledgers at regular intervals or at a point in time. And then finally extract and prepare the unadjusted trial balance. We have our reading list, but before I, I start with the ledgers, I will take a few questions if you have on the journal entries that we did on Tuesday, just by way of um, recap and for those who have issues with what we did. Any question on posting in the journals or the day books? Any question from students? Kindly raise your hand so Okay, I take it that we are all okay. And so we would move on to the ledgers. What is the ledger? Okay, again, I did indicate that every profession has its own peculiar terminologies. And so don't get confused. You just have to be abreast and be conversant with the terminologies that we are using and be able to describe it in your own simple way. And so the ledger or the ledgers is just a book, okay, that has been called or named a ledger. And it contains the classified or the condensed or the summarized record of all the transactions, okay, that would have been posted from the books of original, original entry. Recall that the books of original entry or the journals are the beginning point of recording bookkeeping, okay? And so every transaction finds itself in one of the journals. Either it is in purchases journal, sales journal, and the general journal, which takes peculiar transactions, or the cash book. These, the others are the, the returned journals. So all, every business, okay, is into buying and selling, manufacturing, anything, it ends in that. And so that begins the starting point. From the journals, we move the transactions to the ledgers. And the ledgers handle the double entry. You would recall that the journals do the single entry where the transactions are just recorded. In the ledgers, we have the double entry, okay? It is also known as the king of all the books of accounts, okay? Because every entry from the journal must be posted. So you cannot skip the entries from the journal straight to the trial balance. It goes through that process. Okay, that's very important book we are referring to as the ledgers. Now, what are some of the features of the ledgers? The ledgers are ruled as two identical sites. Okay, so within the ledger, which is a broader name, we have the accounts. And so the accounts have the debit, which is always the left-hand side and the credit which is always the right hand side, okay? So that is an account. Now the difference between the two sides, the side which is lower would represent the balance on that account, okay, on that ledger account. If the two sides, that's the debit and the credit are equal, 
then there will be no balance. Okay, and so every time we have the ledger account, we must look out for which side is lower. The side that is lower, we would have a balance there. Okay, we would have a balance there. And the balance is usually drawn at the end of a period, or if you are preparing yearly accounts, then it's at the end of the year. Okay, and that depends on the business entity. Sometimes it could be every quarter, you could even have balances at the end of every month. That depends on the business, okay? So we are saying that the side which is deficit or smaller would have to make up for that. And that is known as the closing balance. So why the difference is becomes, that figure becomes the closing balance. And if it is closing for this period, the next period it becomes the opening balance. So we must note that. Now, what are some of the advantages of a ledger? Okay. We know that the journals have single entries. And so book the ledgers, okay, is where we successfully apply the double entry. The ledgers have double entries. Okay, all the transactions will have to be entered twice. And so it is complete and it is reliable where you can determine at every point which two items were affected and whether it has been recorded. Okay, now from the ledgers, you can also ascertain the amount of income and expenditure, okay, and that will result through what happened through the trading profits and loss accounts. It is also possible within the ledgers to ascertain the value of the different assets, liabilities, and the position of the financial statement. And so you would realize that the ledger is called the king because everything goes through the, the ledgers. Whether the statement of financial position or the statement of cash flow or the profit or loss, that information passes through the ledgers. So it becomes a very key and important uh, book for accountants, okay? Now, once you do those entries, it is also possible to locate, okay, errors if that happens because double entry would have taken place. And so you can always trace and track transactions and if there are errors, it can be quickly corrected. Now let's look at the types of ledgers. Okay, so within the ledgers, you would have accounts. And these accounts could be accounts of the various assets. It could be accounts of the liabilities. It could be accounts of the capital, income, and expenditure. Those are the issues. So what types of ledgers do we have? Okay, we have what we call the subsidiary ledgers. Now the subsidiary ledgers can be broken down into two, the sales ledger and the purchases ledger. Recall the sales day book. Recall the purchases day book. And so if we have the individual transactions in the sales day book, that individual credit transaction would be posted to the personal account of that customer. So for instance, on Tuesday, one of the, the key names that I recall looking at the question we solved on Tuesday was ascertain, where the business entity sold to ascertain. And we recorded it in the sales day book. Now, for every sale to ascertain, we have to look for the personal account of ascertain and post that sale to their personal account. And so the sales ledger picks information from the sales day book, okay? And within the sales ledger, you have the individual personal account of the customers the business have sold to. So if we're recalling what we did on Tuesday, then we have would have had under the sales ledger, would have an account for ascertain, 
okay, as a tenant's account and all the others that the business sold to. The other subsidiary ledger is the purchases ledger. Okay, the purchases ledger also has contains accounts for the, the personal accounts of the suppliers. Again, if I cast my mind back to the question we did on Tuesday, you would recall that the business bought goods from Susie, from Powell, okay, and I think from Jane. So once we enter those transactions, the purchases they go, the individual accounts and the amounts will be sent to the personal accounts of those suppliers. Just a minute. So those are the contents of the subsidiary ledger. Then we also have the general ledger or the main ledger. Now for all other accounts, okay? For all other accounts which are not personal, we would find them in the general ledger. Okay, we would find them in the general ledger. What are some of the accounts that are not personal? What are some of the transactions that the business can engage in that will result in an impersonal? What are some of the items? Uh, who can help us? Christopher. Madam. I thought somebody wanted to give us an example. Yeah, Madam, I'll try. Yes, what is it? If the business buys furniture. If the business buys a fixed asset, okay, that fixed asset account, which is not a personal account, would go into the general ledger. Okay, good. Madam, disposal of fixed assets. Okay, disposal of fixed assets. Good, it would also go in there. Thank you. So these are the two main ledgers. So I expect that when they say a subsidiary ledger, you should know that a subsidiary ledger can be broken down into the purchases ledger and the sales ledger. Then we have the general ledger that, and the sales ledger contains the personal accounts of customers, whilst the purchases ledger contains the personal account of suppliers. Then the other main ledger or the general ledger contains all other accounts that are not personal, okay? Now we have been talking about accounts. What is an account, okay? It is just a means of keeping record or a means that accountants are able to summarize the history of similar transactions that have occurred relating to a particular transaction or event. So if we have sales to um, as a team, we would want to provide a record of every transaction that the business have had with as a team. And so an account provides a record, okay, date by date, whatever date we have a transaction with record, it will be captured in the account, okay? And that is why we say that it is an explanation, it is a record and it provides a summary of the history of similar transactions or events pertaining to either a customer a supplier or an item, okay? Now it is a standardized format and it is used to accumulate the effect of transactions on each financial statement item. You recall the effect of transactions. So, I didn't also teach, just a minute. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so that is an account, okay? And remember we said accounting shows the effect of transactions on the equation. And so you see it appearing here, the monetary effect of transactions on each item within the accounting equation. But here, the only, the only good thing here is that it is recorded, it is a summary. Not as we saw earlier on where you have to do it after every transaction. Here, the account accumulates everything. And so at the end of the period, you can tell how much is on each, okay, each of the items within the, the financial statement elements, okay, and that is it. And again, an account helps us to summarize the effect, to be able to determine balance and draw inferences about a company's activity. So if, for instance, if as a team, okay, who is our customer has been, we have been selling goods to ascertain, but we realize that after a while, ascertain has not paid because we are able to accumulate and summarize ascertain's transaction in what we are calling an account. We can tell if there is a problem with ascertain and quickly, okay, write to ascertain to find out why he's not paying on his account because when he pays, we will reduce his indebtedness. When we sell, we would increase his indebtedness. So an account provides the summary and we are able to determine the balance and to be able to draw, okay, inferences. We are able to make some meaning out of, okay, what is happening with each account. So this is what we have, the types of accounts I've already indicated to you that accounts are found within ledgers. Accounts are found within ledgers. And so when we take the subsidiary ledgers, we have the personal accounts. So the subsidiary ledgers, we have the personal accounts where we have the debtors accounts that is personal accounts of all the customers that the business is selling to. In the same way, we have the personal accounts of all the creditors. These are suppliers from whom the business is buying from. Let us note the difference. So the personal accounts will contain individual names, a certain account, Joe's account, Powell's account, this account, okay, these are debtors and creditors because we have sold to them. Once we sell and you have not yet paid, you are a debtor. If we have bought from you and we as a business have not yet paid, we consider you a creditor. So we have individual accounts. Then we have the in-personal accounts. The in-personal accounts will be found under the general ledger okay so you see the flow from the general journal we come to the general ledger now under the impersonal accounts we have the real accounts and we have the nominal accounts the real accounts relate to things that are real that we can easily touch fixed assets motor vehicle plant and equipment these are real things that we can always lay hands on, okay? And that would also be found under the general ledger. The other aspects are accounts relating to expenses, income, and capital. So for instance, if we go back to the question we solved again on Tuesday, you will recall that at the end of the sales journal, I, the balance we had, I said to sales account, the total to sales account. That sales account is a nominal account, okay? That would help us determine the income for the period, okay? It is a nominal account 
and it will help us determine the income for the period. In the purchases journal, the total for the period, I also indicated purchases account. That purchases account is an expense account and will fall under nominal account. So as we go along, you would have to be able to get the flow. All items in the purchases journal would go to the individual items, would be reposted to the creditor's accounts under the subsidiary or the purchases ledger. So from purchases journal to purchases ledger, the total of the purchases journal would go to the general ledger as a nominal account. If it is the sales journal, it will be posted to the sales ledger, the individual debtors accounts. The total from the sales journal will be sent to the general ledger as a nominal account. Be mindful of that, okay? This is the format of an account. If you recall the cash account, we said the cash book can be used as a journal and a ledger. Immediately we move to a ledger and it will be known as the cash account. In the journal, we're referring to it as a cash book. In the ledger, it will be known as the cash account. Okay, and it is ruled the same way. So you have your date, your details, your ledger folio, the amounts on the debit side and on the credit side. So this is the format of account. It doesn't change. For all the accounts will be ruling, this is the format. And so we must note that. Madam, please, there's no discount. Or... Hmm? Come again. Uh, there, with the uh, format of the account, there's no discount. Well, if we are doing a three column cash book or cash account, we can have the discount. Okay. Okay, sure. Okay, but if there is no issue about discount in the question, then you can just have a cash account without uh, without the discount color. Yeah. Are you okay? Um, yes, please. Okay. Okay, so let's see how we post how we post from the day books to the ledgers. We are, we are navigating gradually towards the reports, preparing the reports. And so, and this is what technocrats do, okay, in the profession of accounting. Unfortunately, like I did indicate earlier on, because of softwares, lab, um, softwares today, we don't see the physical thing being done because by the time you capture something, it's going to the journal, somebody authorizes it, it's going to the ledgers, somebody pulls it down and we are preparing financials. And so you don't see the practical aspect of it. So in previous times, you had all these big fat books where you have to now go and pick, pick the source document, your receipt, your invoice, and do the recording in the journals at the end of every day, somebody is also sitting, waiting for the journals and the source document again to post to the ledgers. Somebody is also waiting to balance the accounts of. And so it is that process. And that's why we say accounting is a process. Now, how do we post to the ledgers? This diagram, if you look at it, we have the sales day book on top there. I have just explained this a couple of minutes ago. I'm going to take it again. On your right, you would see that the total of the sales day book goes to what? Where does it go to Michael? Michael, Michael Kofi, Isaac, Isaac Corbin, where does it go to? Read for me. I want it goes to where? Tete, are you going to read for us the total only to where? Madam, Madam General. Um, sales account. To sales account. 
Yes. I just wanted you to read what is there. I have already said it, but I just want to emphasize it. So the total of the sales day book only goes to the sales account. Where would we find the sales account? Stephen the Abel? nominal account. In the nom it's a nominal account in which of the ledgers? General ledger. In the general ledger. Okay, in the general ledger. So that is what we have. So you open the sales account in the general ledger and the account has a debit and a credit. Let's note that. Now, on the other hand, the individual transactions in the sales day book, I refer you back to ascertain again. We sold to ascertain. So the individual item, on one of the days we sold 150,000 to ascertain. So the customer's account under the sales ledger would have ascertain account and we'll have the debit and we'll have the credit. Mm -hmm. Then I think there was another person we sold to, the name will be there. So we'll open the individual accounts for each of them and that falls under the sales ledger. So that is how we send the transactions away from the sales day book. Similarly, in the, when we post, and this relates to credit sales and credit purchases, okay? This relates to credit sales and credit purchases because those are the ones that reflect in the day purchases and sales day book. So similarly, for the purchases day book, send the total to the purchases account in the general ledger. Once the individual suppliers, okay, the individual people who have supplied us. So for instance, in the question we saw, we saw Susie, we saw Powell. You would have to open the individual accounts for Powell under the purchases ledger and move their individual transactions to their accounts. And that is for the credit purchases. Then we also have returns, returns, okay, returns. Remember that anytime we sell sales, we have a returns what? Inwards. And when we buy, we have a returns outwards. So how do we post these returns? So we'll look at the returns outwards. The return outwards, each debit note will be posted separately to the supplier's account. So for instance, Susie, okay. <laughs> Tete, Tete, you are disturbing the class. So either you switch your, okay, thank you. So Susie, in the question we saw, we realized that Susie was our supplier. We went to buy from Susie. So let's assume that we return to Susie. Now for each debit note, we would send it to Susie's account, okay? To reduce the amount that we owe Susie because we have retained some of the goods. If we buy, we will credit because Susie is a creditor. It's a liability, so it has credit balance. So anytime we return back, we have to reduce how much we, we owe Susie. And so it will be posted to the supplier's individual account. Okay, the individual returns we have made for each of them, we would send it there. Again, the total of the returns outwards will go to the return outwards account, which is in the general ledger which is in the general ledger, okay? For the sales, you recall that anytime we sell, we are willing to accept inwards, okay? There is a return inwards. And so if there is a return inwards, okay, then it means that the total of the return inwards 
will go to the general ledger and the account name will be returned in what account. So look at the arrows and where they are pointing to. The individual people who have returned to us will give them a credit note because they are owing the business, okay? They are owing the business. And so when, we, when, they, when they return to us, we must show that, okay, their indebtedness to the business is reduced. So that credit note, we will post it to reduce their indebtedness into their individual accounts to reduce their indebtedness. So that is posting for returns. We would we will go back to that um, that question. So be prepared and let's get ready for it. We would go back and resolve that question. So we are going to do requirement three and four right after here. Okay. Then at the end of the period, we'll have to balance off. I've told you that ordinarily the debit and the credit side should be equal, but that is never the case. There would always be one side that may be more, okay? It is not because uh, we have failed to enter transactions, but it is because things like uh, return inward, so I have sold to you. And let us recall in the personal accounts, these are people either who have not yet paid, okay, or we have not yet paid. And so it will still be outstanding. And maybe the agreement is that we pay gradually. And so we'd have to, at the end of every period, determine how much is left for us to pay. So we need to strike a balance, okay? We need to look at both sides. The side that is small, we we'll deduct the left side and put the difference in the other side, and that becomes the balancing figure. Okay, now the balancing figure will be the closing balance for this period. When we begin the next period, because the relationship with our, our customers and our suppliers is ongoing, let us recall the business is a going concern, it is going. Okay, so it doesn't end. So we don't expect that that is the last period and so the customer should come and pay, no. We expect that the following period, it will begin and so the balance outstanding will become the opening balance, okay? It will become the opening balance for the next period, okay? Which could be either an asset or a liability, depending on whether the person is a debtor or a creditor, recall, your current assets and your current liabilities. You have data there, you have creditor there. Okay, so that is how we pick the figures. Okay, so how do we balance off? I've just told you, you look at both sides, you cast all the entries that you have made. Okay, the side that is bigger becomes the total and you determine the difference and the difference, you would put it at the, the side that has the smaller amount, okay? And you insert that as a balancing figure. But what we use is a balance carried down, okay? So it's balance CD at the side with the smallest amount, okay? The balance CD or the balance carried forward, okay? So just to let us know that this is how much outstanding at the end of the period on that particular account. Now, at the beginning, you have to transfer the balancing figure to the opposite side. Okay, so let's assume that we have opened an account, cash account. And at the end of the period, the smaller portion is the credit side. So the balancing figure is at the credit side. If you recall, we have said that all assets have debit balances. So you would remember that the balancing figure may normally be at the credit side, but the next period you have to bring it to the debit side because cash is an asset. 
immediately the credit side is more than the debit side and you have to bring it to the other side, then you know that there has been an overdraft. Okay, you have overdrawn. Okay, it cannot happen with cash, but maybe with bank. Because how can you overdraw on your cash? The business cannot spend more than the cash it, ha it has collected unless you have gone to borrow. Okay, so immediately you don't get it right. You should know that then there is an error. So those are the checks that we ourselves have within. So the balance CD should have the date of the last day of the period. So again, if we use the example we had on Tuesday, it was 1st September to 30th September. So if we had a balance, it would be balance carried down as at 30th September. When we get to October, the balance brought forward or brought down will have 1st October. So you recall that when we were opening the general journal, okay, no, not the general, the cash book, I brought the balances forward and I used the new date for those of you who recall, okay? So that is it. The side of the account where the balance BD determines the name of the account balance. So I just use the cash. If the balance brought forward is at the debit side, and we say the cash has a debit balance, okay? It has a debit balance. So that is what we refer to. Any question? Any question? Okay, so we'll practicalize it shortly. Now from these balances, we can draw up a list of all credit and debit balances on the various accounts, okay, within the ledgers at a point in time. And this is known as the trial balance. Now, if every entry has gone on well, you would realize that your trial balance, the debit and the credit side should agree. Immediately, it is not agreeing. It means one of your double entry didn't go well. Okay, so the trial balance is used to test the accuracy of the double entry bookkeeping that you have done within the ledgers. So anytime you construct a trial balance, and it's just a list based on your personal, impersonal, and your nominal balances over the period, you just put all of them together. Those that have debit balances, you write all debit. Those that have credit, you put them and you cast, when you cast, it must agree. Immediately, it doesn't agree, you know that there is an error, okay? And so you may have to go back to look for it, and that is the most annoying aspect of it, okay? So it helps in identifying and determining bookkeeping errors. So whether each debit has a corresponding credit entry and whether it has been correctly cast, okay, and entered and recorded and calculated. Now it is from the trial balance that we prepare the financial statement. So the trial balance also acts as a link between the ledgers and the reports, okay? Aside helping us to check the accuracy of our recording and to detect errors, and to correct them before we prepare the reports. It also acts as a link between the, between the ledgers and the financial statement reports. And so that brings us to the end of today's lecture. Um, we should be able to know the advantages of having the different journals, the difference between trade discount and cash discount. I think I've talked about that. Okay, I did indicate that trade discount is given for quantity purchased, while cash discount is given for prompt payment. Okay, prompt payment. We should know the difference between the journals and the ledgers. Any question? If there is no question, then we'll have to pull out our questions again, and then we would solve, complete that question. And then we'll send you um, 
question set three, where there will be a lot of questions involving the ledgers, and you'd have to enter them into the ledgers, okay? There are some times that you can do the ledgers without the journals because the ledgers have double entries. So you can do journals, you can do ledgers and pull out your trial balance, okay? When you have information. Any question for me? Okay, if there is no question, please let's get back to your questions. Everybody should go. Yes, uh, Daisy. Yes, Daisy. Um, Madam, please, good afternoon. Please, oh. in, in the previous lectures, you were like the credit balance and the debit balance. They have to be the same here since the trial balance. But before that, we said if one is more, you move it into if the debit is more, you move it into the credits. I didn't understand that part. So please, could you go over again? No, Daisy, come again. I don't also get what you mean. Um, you, in the previous lecture that you read, you said that the, the trial balance, the debit, and the, you yes. said in the deb, the trial balance, the debits and the credits have to be the same mm -hmm. at the end of the period. Yes. But before that, yes, before that, so when I write into the book, the if the credit is small, you transfer it into the debits. And I didn't understand so, that part where you said if I am talking yes, about two different things. The first one I said related, relates to accounts within the ledgers. And the balances of those accounts is what we move to the trial balance. So there are two different issues we are talking about. From the journals, you move, you do the double entry within the ledgers. Now that is where you balance off, where you would have the debit and the credit perhaps not equal. So you have to strike the difference and put the balance carried down at a point and the balance carried down for the end of the period becomes the opening for the next period. That is the accounts within the ledgers. After you have finished that, you need to draw up a trial balance. And the trial balance I have indicated seeks to ensure that the entries in the ledgers are accurate, no error. And it helps us to ensure the accuracy. So if you have entered the double entry in your ledgers well, the balances that you are extracting from the ledger accounts is what you use to prepare the trial balance. And that is why I said, with the trial balance, it must balance. If it doesn't, it means that there's a problem with your entries in the ledgers. So there are two different things, and please take note of that. Okay? Yes, yes. yes. thank you, madam. Okay, Florence. Yes, Florence. Florence, your hand is up. I'm calling you. You are not going to even respond. So what do you want madam, me to do? Please. My network went off. Mm -hmm. And please, my question is, is it always that a debit balance would increase than the credit balance for us to get the balance carried down or sometimes both tallies? It depends on which uh, financial statement element and which item you are referring to. So you should know by now that all assets have debit balances. So if you are entering your, and then you realize that this account is an asset account, and yet your balance BD or brought forward is at the credit side, then you know that you have done things wrongly. I'll give you an example. Fixed asset um, motor vehicle. So if you mistakenly go and enter bought motor vehicle, and you enter it on the wrong side, because when a business buys motor vehicle, Asset in the name of motor vehicle is increasing. Maybe by cash, cash is decreasing. And you know that anytime asset is increasing, you debit it. Anytime asset is reducing, you credit it. But if you go and change the entries, 
by debiting cash and crediting motor vehicle, it means that the credit side of the motor vehicle account may be more than the debit. And your balance BD will show that the motor vehicle has a, a credit balance. Meanwhile, that is an asset account. So straight away, it will cause your trial balance not to balance because you would have changed the order of the recording. Okay, so though you may have confidence that you have done the double entry, you may have changed the double entry. So that slide, which shows that all assets have debit balances, all liabilities have credit balances normally. And that, that rule doesn't change. The only time an asset can have a credit balance may be with bank, where the banks have agreed for the bank balance to be overdrawn, overdraft. Then you may allow that, okay? But ordinarily, cash bank is an asset. They must have debit balances. So if you have a credit balance, of course, maybe there are transactions that resulted in that. But then you have to look out for whether there is some agreement for the bank to overdraw its account. Okay, so that is it. Okay, please. Uh, yes, I'll take the last question. Paul. Madam, please, where you have inventory at the opening, uh, the same entries, which ledger will you translate it in? Which ledger will you post it? From what I have talked about, Paul, which ledger will inventory go to? Will it be personal or impersonal? It will go to uh, impersonal. Impersonal, will it be real or nominal? Real. So those are the things you should ask yourself. Once you get the understanding, you ask yourself, and as we go along, you try to rectify it, okay? Yes, madam. Okay, so let's go back to the question. We don't have much time. We have to finish and draw the trial balance. On Tuesday, we are starting a new topic. Okay, so um, we are going to this time be open. What's the requirement for that question? That three and four. Who will read it for us? Post, Madam, post yes. the relevant personal and impersonal ledgers. Prepare a trial balance. Okay, post to the relevant personal and impersonal ledgers. Okay, and prepare a trial balance. So now we have just learned what impersonal and personal accounts are. What is the name of the business? Or Dai Bidai Enterprise. So one thing I forgot to tell you is that in accounting, the name of the business will always precede everything you do, okay? It's normally attract max. All die, we die. Enterprise. So in the books of, in the books, all die, we die enterprise okay so we can have the first one which is our ledgers so we can open our uh, which ledger do you want us to open first sales ledger, ledger. Sales. okay sales. so sales ledger 
Okay, now we know that under the sales ledger, we have the individual sales accounts. So who are those we sold to? Asset team. Asset team. So I hope you are all drawing. So the sales ledger, we have a certain, a certain account, a certain account. We call that it is a debit and a credit. So that is debit. That is credit. We have our the first one I'll do it subsequent ones. I won't do. I won't draw it with all the lines like that. Okay. So we still have the um, okay. So we have the date. We have the particulars, we have the ledger folio, and we have the amount. So date. Particulars, you can do particulars or details. Right. Ledger folio, the amount. Remember also that in accounting, you have, always have to put the currency sign, okay? And if there are sometimes, as we go along, I'll show you those things. Sometimes it is in thousands. You don't, you don't want to be writing all. So you can put the three zeros on top, okay? So that the rest will be there. So we could have done it this way. That figure, is it in thousands? Yes, madam. Okay, so I could come here again and put GHC in thousands, so that following I'll be writing, if it is 20,000, I'll only write 20, because the thousand is up there. Somebody too would want to just write all the figure, doesn't want trouble. Then that one, you don't put the thousand on top, you don't put the three zeros, you just put the Ghana CD there. Because immediately you put the three zeros, and you go and write 20,000 in there, then you're talking about 20 million. And so that you must also be careful. Okay, so depending on what is good for you, we are always very flexible. So here again, because I did it here, I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay. So this is the sales ledger. This is ascertained account. Okay. So, mm -hmm. what are we posting? Now we have to go back. We said that double entry. So what are we posting to the sales ledger? Uh, 2nd September 2020 date. Mm -hmm. We sold to ascertain 50,000 CDs. So, in our books, what is ascertain to the business? Uh, data. Good. Ascertain is a data because ascertain is our customer. Once the business is selling to ascertain, 
and he has not yet paid, it means Asetin is owing the business. That money we have to collect. It is our money in the hands of Asetin. So credit, credit sales means on credit. Credit sales. Yes. yes. Credit sales means it's on credit. It means the person has not yet paid. Okay. Okay. Are you okay? I hope we are all following. Madam, at yes. the end of yes, uh, August, he was owing us. So. Who was owing us? As a thing. Um, there is balance. Okay, so it means we have to start with balance. So the closing balance becomes what? Balance. Yeah, balance. How much was the closing balance as at 31st August? Well, 1,000. Thousand so that would be plus 9, 20. So the closing balance becomes, so it will be balance. Brought down. Balance brought down. Or somebody can also use brought forward. Balance brought forward. Okay, so whichever one you are very okay with, you can use it. Okay, what was the amount? And because um, as is somebody we sold to and it's a debtor, we know that all debtor, debtor is an asset, so it has debit balance. So the opening balance will not even think to it's debit. How much is it? Thousand two hundred. So it means it's one point two. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. madam. Uh -huh. But if you don't want and you are not conversant, let's go. Today we have space. So let me take the zero zero from here so that nobody will come and be asking questions. Mm. Okay. I think we have space, so we can just do that. When we are okay with it, we can decide to go. So it's just 1,200, 1,200, okay. Mm -hmm. So now let's continue. Second, second September, 2020. Second September, what was the transaction? We sold to a certain amount in 50,000. So second September, we sold. So in our sales account, what is the second October? Come again. No, I didn't say second October. You it's have second, the first. You are yes. They said second are... September. Huh? Yeah, by second September. No, oh, it's second September. September. The date is second September. Oh, let me correct this. I sent an earlier set of questions that had the old dates. Those questions were re later reviewed and the dates were changed. And that is what we posted to Sakai. So if you pulled it from Sakai, it will have September. If you are using the one I sent earlier on, that one will have July, August. Okay, so please, whichever way, my issue is for you to understand what we are doing for you to be able to sit. It doesn't matter the dates. If it is August, we put the dates there. Okay, so it's just for you to understand the principles in the entries. And you can always go back and do that. Okay. But I'm so, and when you're starting, you always start with the uh, previous years before you come to the... If you have a previous balance. Previous balance, okay. Then you have to start with that balance. That's why I said that the business is a going concern. And so that means that the people we are dealing with, we continue to deal with them. So the business decides to end, okay, through either sale or through liquidation. Okay, other than that, so as a team is a customer, we are always selling to them. So as a team, we never finish paying. 
If it is cash sales, it means that one take and take in claim. But where it is on credit, it means we have come to some agreement with ascertain that perhaps because you are one of the people who buy our goods, when you buy, take your time and pay. That is credit. Okay, that would have been an agreement along the line. Okay, and it is built out of trust with relationship with the customer or the supplier. Okay. okay, so what did we do? What did you do to ascertain? We sold eh? Yes, madam. Okay, so sales. Now you recall that we have the major volume for so assuming. Okay, we are making reference. Okay, so if we making reference, somebody to sales journal or where it is going to, the number there. <clears throat> okay, we can put a reference there just to be able to know where we are picking it from or where it will be posted to. How much is it? 50,000. Okay, good. What else? When else did we sell? 12 September. On the 12th September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the same amounting to 50,000. Another 50,000? Yes. Yes. Any other? No. I said, Tendi didn't make any payment. He made payments. She made, yeah. Yeah, she made payments. How much? She received some check. check. So in this case, for any, any transaction that pertains to a skin, we'll have to record it. I'm on. But I'm as a thing with the goods. She returned she return goods. She returned goods on, on the Four. 8th September. Yeah. As a thing, return goods. Good. So if we sell to as a team, okay, we are not doing double entry. Do you know that we are not doing double entry? We are still yes, missing. madam. So if we sell to as a team, what should be the double entry? The 15,000. What should it go to? So let's go back and do double entry. Madam, is it everything? Come again. Is it everything? The return it was. I am yes, saying we are supposed to do double entry. So let's oh. do double entry. Okay. So, okay, madam, we, so we'll credit you the debit. You debit so as a team. Let's read the, the question the, on the second of nine and let's do the double entry. I don't I don't want us to do it this way. Otherwise, students will get confused to come and introduce. So let me introduce the double entry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so read, read, and let's see what the double entry should be. Credit so. At the same 50,000. Credit sales. So if you sell to the business, what entry will okay? Madam, the yes. stock, stock mm -hmm. that means it is a certain issue. Stock will do what? It will decrease the credit. Stock will reduce and then? A certain will gain. Will gain. Okay, so. Settle. So where would we find? So we have to open what? The stock account. The stock account. account the, yeah. Or the stock account. So we are now doing double entry. Yes, Amos, I think there's some feedback coming from you. Could you put your mic off? What account is stock? Is it an asset, a liability, or 
Anna, please, 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 <laughs> because if somebody is talking about uh, uh, inventory having credit balance now, then we are in trouble. Okay, so please, who your account as it is, okay? Uh, otherwise, the ruling is going to take a lot of my time. So you rule it. I've ruled the first one as would have ruled. Okay, it doesn't... Okay, do we have a balance on our stock? Oh, yeah. no. Do we have a balance? No. 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 Okay. So you may not see me ruling, but I have everything of mine there. Madam, Madam please, I, I don't know where the inventory account is coming from all of a sudden. Okay, me too. It's part of the question. Yeah, Madam, we don't understand. So what don't you understand? The, the sales I the don't pay. understand why stock account is coming in now. Okay, right. so we'll, we'll explain to you. So, yeah, madam, I'm also confused. I think it should be the inventory. If, if, if we have, it should go under. It should be an opening. It's okay, Justice. You say you don't understand. We'll explain to you, but you just take it easy. Okay? Let me finish ruling my account, and then I'll show you why it should be. Madam, I think I know there is a right. Don't worry, Solomon. When I finish ruling, I'll mention the name to explain to us. So Solomon, explain to us why we are we have to open a stock account. Um, I think you are trying to uh, teach us how you are going to do the double entry. So it's mm -hmm. like if let's say you sold some goods to your customers on credit, mm -hmm. how is the uh, double entry going to be? Mm -hmm. And so it's like if you sold goods, let's say the stock that you are writing there to ascertain. Now ascertain have received the goods. So if you give you give us a thing goods, then you have to credit what stock account. Then as a thing is receiving, so you debit what as a thing's account. Okay. So exactly the point. Let us recall that anytime we sell, what are we selling? In that in this instance, what are we selling? Goods. Inventory or goods. So if it says sales to ascertain, it is goods we are selling. So double entry requires that you record how many times? Twice. 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 So if we have recorded ascertain school. Okay. Where else should we record? Stock or oh, stock account or inventory. Madam, sales account. Madam, shouldn't you have? Madam, it's wrong. Account. It's sales account. Sales account. It's not stock. It's sales if you, account. If you record it here, you can't go to a sales account. Yeah, because we are recording it under the ledger right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me take it as we have. We have it. Yes, Stephen. Yes, Stephen. Stephen, your hand is up. Stephen, your hand is up and you won't talk. Um, Emmanuel. Madam. Yes, what is your issue? Madam, please, my hand is not up. 
Uh, I saw your hand up. Okay. Uh, Stephen. Yes. Whose hand is up and yet the person will not talk? Emmanuel Jabba, your hand is up. Musa Ibrahim, your hand is up. But what I'm saying is, why don't we finish with um, as a things account before we move to the next one? Because if, let's say, we are to draw it in the um, exams and we just do the table for as a thing short and we write the next account below it, and we get to know that there is another transaction. How are we going to do it? Are we to cancel it and start all over again? Emmanuel, I haven't drawn anything behind beneath a certain account. The only thing yeah. I want to draw your mind to is that in the ledgers, double entry must take place. Oh, okay. So you cannot say that you want to do one before the other. In this instance, I am going to do it one after the other. But in the ledgers, double entry must take place. And it's because for this one, we are looking, at, we are moving from, we are moving from, uh, what's the name? We are moving from the journal to the ledgers. That is why you are seeing me doing it this way. If I was teaching you on the board, I would have drawn the two. And in exams, the paper belongs to you. If you want more, we will give you. So if it means you have to use one page for one account, leave it, do it. Nobody will come and tell you that, why are you wasting University of Ghana exams sheet? Are you okay, Mano? So that should not be your headache. Uh -huh. Okay, so, so for this particular one, we will not use stock. I don't want to confuse you because we are moving it from that and it is sales. So let's leave it to sales. The total will go to sales account. And so the entry will balance. Okay. So, okay. but you see, if in other instances, sold goods on credit, you would sometimes your stock would reduce and the person's account would increase. That is the double entry. But for this one, let's, we are moving from the ledgers, the, the journal to the ledgers. So let's do it that way. I'm sure the next question we'll be solving, you would see some other way. So quickly, what else? Mm -hmm. So what are we supposed to move to the sales account? What are we supposed to move to the sales account? Uh, As a team. As a team. Okay, so we can move As a team to the sales account, but we could also move the total to the sales account. Do you recall that? Yes. Yes. So for purposes of now, because we are treating it from the journals to the ledgers, I will go as I have taught you on the slides so that you don't get confused. So what period was it? It was end of what? 30th September. Yes. No, no. So what will be the details? What will be, what will be the details? Credit sales. Credit balance sales. Board. Do we have a balance brought forward? No. No. OK, so credit sales. But realize that in the individual accounts were debiting, you realize that? Yes. A certain who else was our customer? Freeman, Joe, mm -hmm. and Powell. No, no. Hey, Joe and Freeman. Sorry, Joe and Freeman. No, we free. An account for Joe. 
What John? What ledger would we find John's account? Sales journal. Sales, sales, sales ledger. Sales ledger. Sales journal. Sales journal. What ledger? Sales ledger. Sales ledger. So sales ledger, and then who else? Who else did we sell to? Freeman. Okay, so I'm going to put it here. You see, the challenge is that we have to use the screen. So you should have a big book. Open the sales ledger. Under the sales ledger, you have Asetin, you have Joe, you have Freeman. Okay, so that you can follow through it. Um, Three months account. Oh. Are you okay? All these are underway. The sales oh, one. Ledger. 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 Are we following? Yes, yes madam. Those who said yes, they were madam. Are we okay? Yes. Yes, madam. I'm just trying to make sure that we are doing double entry rather than entering it single. So please, we have to do the double entry. For purposes of moving it from the journals to the ledger, I'll go this way. But when we come to transactions where we don't have to open journals, that one then will go the other way. So let's see. Okay. So again, I'm not going to put the draw the columns. So please make sure. You are drawing the columns. Yes, justice. Please. Uh, let's say I said we've recorded cases for as too. But the cases it is appearing in the cash book. And that same cases is going to appear in the sales account. Is it not triple? Instead of double entry principle. Hello, madam. Yes. I hope you got me. No, I haven't got him. The point I'm trying to make is we've recorded cases at uh, as a ten's account. Are you sure that as a ten was cash sales? If you have fifty thousand. Why do you want to jump the gun? <laughs> Whilst we are not there yet. Hmm? We are not there yet. So why do you want to eh? you want to let people so, so, so. I'm sorry, it, it's not like that. I have missed uh, I didn't read the question. Uh, thank you that you didn't read the question when you acknowledge that. <laughs> so take it easy for us. Some of us, we haven't done accounting before, so take it easy. Okay. Okay, so this is what hey, we madam, have. Thank you. Okay, then. Okay, this is what we have. Hmm. Jeffrey, you are suggesting we have a face-to-face. -face. Uh, yes, madam. And so if it doesn't happen, you will learn. If it doesn't happen, you will learn. The tutorial oh, says, like, not to your teeth about this. Yes, madam, we have to have face to face. We beg. Yeah, so, it's the day. People are going to class to learn. Like, yeah. people have. But then some of the accounting students here yes, are friends. I think, um, this morning there was a group one, group one, and group five. Yeah, they meet and they have face to face. They've been going. Yeah, with group one and group five. Who had a face to face or a face to face? Yes, it was the lecture. Who was the lecture? Doctor Edi. That's all for sales. Okay, so if you add all this. Okay, where is our sales account? You didn't give me the figure for credit sales. 
because we are moving it, what total did we get on Tuesday for credit sales? Three hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Three hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Okay, three two seven thousand. So you would realize that if you add all the three, and that is why the double entry here. If you add all this, this is hundred. Uh, 101, 200, this is uh, 140, 196, 200, okay, 204, yes, so if you add all these, and we are just moving from the sales journal to the individual sales ledger, we get it, and the total of the sales to the sales account in the general ledger. This is a nominal, I didn't put this here. General ledger. Okay, so the sales account is an account in the general ledger. Can you see double entry? I just want you to know that it is double entry because if you look at it, this ones have debit, okay? This one has debit, this one has debit, and the total is what we find in credit here. So the double entry has been fulfilled. Any question? Madam, ma Madam, please, can you decide to also write their names in order not to confuse yourselves? Why not? It is your time that accounting is time uh, pressure. So if you are very fast, there are people who are very fast and smart. Okay, they would re they will collect, they would put every name there again, just to make sure they are fulfilling the double entry. Okay, so we could have done it as a team. And then the date, as a thing, then we put the amount. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed, okay? That is what would normally happen if we are recording minute by minute in the ledgers. Okay, minute by minute in the ledgers, every transaction, we may be doing that, okay? Yes, uh, Parkwesi. Uh, Madam, please, should we always write the details, ledger pool and an amount anytime we are drawing the account or we can leave it up? You know. Obviously, if you don't write it, what do you want me to give you? What you must note is that most often headings and these petty, petty details, okay, sometimes attract marks. Okay, so for purposes of doing what is right, we normally teach students. It's not everybody who gets a big company that they have softwares. Sometimes if you want to learn these things, go to the SMEs. They do these things a lot. Okay, so you must learn it. And if you happen to be a consultant to a group of SMEs preparing accounts for them, okay, then you must do things right. Okay, so that is, even if you are using Excel, you would have to create columns for all of them. So any time somebody picks the Excel, you know what it is. Are you okay? Yes, so, yes. Please do it. It is the training that we are giving you, so you have to do it. So you will not come and tell me that my, te my teacher said or my lecturer said no. Please. Are we okay with this one? This is double entry. Yes, madam. That's Okay, so now I'm going to give you 10 minutes to do the nah, maybe. to do the purchases ledger and the purchases account quickly. So enter all in the purchases ledger and open the purchases account in the general ledger and post 
the purchases account there. Then I come and I have to do. Hello, Madam. Hello. Yes. Please, I have a question. Yes, please ask. Uh, please, uh, if you take uh, a setting, for instance, and maybe at the end of uh, August, uh, he's owing us. Then when we entered into September, we saw some uh, goods to him on credit. Now, if the question asks us to open only cash book, maybe we should draw only the cash book. And then maybe let's say we receive check from as a team. So automatically we record it in the cash book. So before us, we are required to uh, draw only the cash book. Will you open the sales ledger and show uh, as a team account or you leave um, it? Come again. I, I didn't get you. I was doing something else. So. I was saying that, let's say, if you take as a team, for instance, mm -hmm. and maybe at the end of August, he's owing us. Then on the 1st of September, we sold some goods to him on credit. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, uh, we are required to open the cash book alone. We were not asked to open the ledgers. So for that one, we will open uh, the ledger, uh, the sales ledger, and show as a team account there. Or if maybe if you receive the amount open, from asking. If you only ask to open cash book, and this is credit, so there's nothing cash about it. If you look at it, in this particular, uh, what I've shown, as a tenant's account, you realize that as a tenant is owing us 1,200. That's what it means. Madam, what time I mean is September. Maybe on the, Come again. What I'm trying to say is that maybe on the 4th of September, receive some check from Asetim. Yes, if you have received check from Asetim, we will record it. This one, we haven't completed it all. We haven't dealt with the cash transactions. Remember, on Tuesday, we only did the one-sided for the cash book, the three-column cash book. So now, if we have received some amount from Asetim, remember, we entered in the cash book. So the double entry would be to enter in the cash book and then enter here as well. Okay, so for now, we haven't done those ones. We should have, if I wanted us to do this, we'd have to go back to the transactions one, one, one. But because you have the question and we are using that same question, that's why I'm asking you to pick. But when you finish the, the purchases ledger, we'll come to the cash transactions that relate to ascertain free man and whatever and then enter that and see the double entry as well. Are you okay? Yes, madam. Yes, Chantel. You're supposed to do the work. You will want to ask question. Okay, Chantel, what is your problem? Please, I still don't understand why you do not maintain the inventory account in the general ledger. I didn't maintain the inventory account because it is sales. And the double entry has been fulfilled. If we are selling, we are selling goods. Okay, we will bring in stock at a later date. So we want to go slowly. Okay, thank you. Okay. For those who have done accounting before, 
I know most often you are in a hurry, okay, because you know the end, but for purposes of those who have never, okay, jump the gun sometimes, it becomes problematic, okay, and I think on Tuesday, I tried to do that with the other group, and I realized it was not too good, so now we try to go that everybody can follow, and that is why I stopped. At a point, we'll get there. I will finish. Okay, be like your audio, your mic, the on. Are we all getting that? Yes, ben, madam. Did you get that? No. Ben. What else? <laughs> what did you get? Well, I'm still processing it. I'm taking my time. So. Uh, no, 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 no. So what have you done? I'm on the um, Susie's account. That's the purchase ledger. Are you on the purchase account? account? How many people are on the, the purchases ledger? How many accounts are you open? Uh, that's, you know, uh, Susie, Jane, and Paul. Exactly. So, yeah. what, which, will it, you will you enter it in the debit or the credit side? On the credit side. Okay. So when you go to the purchases account in the general ledger, will it be at the debit or the credit? I'm debit. Did I ask you any question? <laughs> I'm so. <laughs> oh. Normally, I like to ask those who have not done accounting before, okay, so, so that we can be at par with them. Other than that, you and the accounting students just take over the class and everybody is just following and they are confused. Some two will not talk. That is why sometimes I like to draw the attention. Fortunately, because we are not in, in a, doing face to face, I'm unable to identify them. So it's only Ben who is a class rep who I know. So if you want me to be mentioning your name every day, just let me know that you haven't done accounting before and you want to really do accounting. Every day you answer questions. Okay, so Ben, you get it. So double entry, every debit entry must have a corresponding credit. Every credit must have a corresponding debit. Are you okay? Yes, madam. 
Okay. So now let's deal with the cash. I know it's almost time, but let's deal with the cash transaction. Anna, please, please, the value for the purchases. I, can't, I, I didn't get the value that they had. The people mentioned some value. They haven't written it. 175. 175. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. You also got the same thing, Kelvin. Yes, madam. What did you get? 175,000. Okay, so everybody must note it and make sure you're getting 175,000. I'm taking it that the people who are giving us the figures are not giving us garbage. Mm -hmm. So we are assuming that the purchases, the total of the purchases account is 175,000. We'll test it. <laughs> if it's not correct, when we get to trial balance, okay, it will. Unfortunately, we cannot get there now, but we will have to go and complete it. And if you want us to go through it and go through another question, I may have to do one class that will be an omnibus class all the three groups, those who feel they want to join with them. And then we'll solve one full question. And then we'll end it there. So that one we'll have to agree. Because on Tuesday, I'm starting a new topic, unfortunately. So um, let's go to the cash transactions and the bank transactions relating to, okay, our customers. So, mm -hmm. What, when did they pay? I think somebody told about discounts. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes, on the, on the 4th. 4th of September. On the 4th of September, what happened? Yes. So we checked at the Received, uh -huh. received checks from at the team, 40,000. Fourth of September, received checks from who? At the team. So here it would be what? Bank. Yes. If you remember, on Tuesday, we did if Etonan is not ready in class, please take him off. Him or her. Okay, so if you remember on Tuesday, we did the one sided transaction. So, for purposes of this, on Tuesday, bank was receiving. If you recall, we see it on the debit side of bank. So, this is the other entry. So here, don't assume that we are doing a single entry. The double entry would have been fulfilled because would have the transaction would be increased in the bank account balance and a decrease in ascertained balance because ascertained is owing us. So once ascertained pays, his indebtedness is what? Reduced. So how much? 40,000. <laughs> Are you okay? So yeah. don't assume that I did a one-way transaction. The double entry, we have already done one. So this is the double entry. So ascertain received check. It means the business received check from ascertain. Okay, 40,000. Okay, and so our bank balance will increase. Ascertain who is a better balance will also increase. So that is the effect of that transaction. So we have shown it. What else? Yo, on the 17th. Yeah. So Joe, what happened to Joe? We also received checks from Joe, thousands since. On what date? 4th September. 4th September. September. So we also have bank. So if we go to bank on that day, how much was it? How much was it? 1,000 Ghana cents. Okay, what about Freeman? We also received checks from Freeman. Okay. 
some of these is webinar so Okay, so on the 4th of September, receive check from Joe. How much oh. was it? Sorry, from Freeman. How much was it? 96,000. 96,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else? Case of September on the 17th. I thought somebody said there were some returns. Yes, on yes. 8th of September. Yeah. By okay. who? As a team. So 8th of September. Return what? In words. In words. In words. In words. How much was it? 10,000 Ghana cities. So, what would be the double entry? Where would we send it to? Send in WhatsApp. Send in WhatsApp. Yeah, send in WhatsApp. Still, let me say it. Return in one's account. In the general ledger. The general ledger. Okay, so we credited it in a certain account. Where would we put it here? Debit. Debit side. Debit it. Double entry. Okay. Every, every debit must have its corresponding credit. This is where we find it. Okay. What else? Did you also return this? Hey, sorry. Did you also return? What date was it? 8th. 8th September. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we put the name of the person it as a 10 so that we would know how much was it? 10,000. Mm -hmm. What else? Joe, Joe, Joe. Also returned goods. Joe also returned goods on the same day. Yes, yes please. please. You know, big match. Oh, Calvin. Sorry, madam. Sorry, madam. No. <laughs> How much? M thousand. And Freeman. Freeman also returned. Okay, Freeman also returned on the same date. Yes, yes please. Then we should have created it on another page. How much? 3,000. OK. So let's go to their accounts to fulfill the double entry. So we have Joe on the, what, what date was it? On the 8th. 8th September. So returns. Return in what? How much was it, Joe? 1,000. Mm -hmm. Who else? Friedman, 3,000. Three thousand. Yes, Lauren, Lorenda. 
Madam, please, with the returning once account, can you record it just as we recorded the sales? Like, you just put the whole figure. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we could have done it that way. Okay, thank you. Yes, we could have done it that way, okay. Yeah, it, it, it amounts to the same thing. So this is what we have. Now, um, Madam, yes. Please, they received, um, how do you call it, on 17th. 17th, what is happening on 17th? They received Bam. checks from Asset They received checks, yes, yeah. from Asset Okay, so 17th. So if that, uh, reach the, this thing for me, the transaction. So, um, receive checks as a thing, 20,000. Okay, so Ben, the business received check from as a thing, 20,000. What will be the double entry? Ben, are you there? Well, I'm please, I'm here. So business received check from a certain 20,000 on the 17th of September. What will be the trans what will be the double entry? Just double entry. I'm not talking about increase or decrease. What to so let's go back to the basics, the effect. What will be happening? What are the credit side will be as a team? The, the credit side will be as a team. Uh-huh. And the debit side will be. But that will be on the bank side. Exactly. So what is increasing to the bank? The bank balance. Hey, you see, I've even answered the question, what is happening? And I said, what is increasing? <laughs> they are laughing at me. So you would realize that the bank of the business is increasing by that amount. While as a team, who is a debtor, account will decrease the effect. And that is the same thing we are doing here. Okay. The only issue here is that we have already entered the bank balance. And so we would have to enter this side. So how much is it? 20,000. 20,000. 20,000. Okay, uh, Madam, 20,000. Are we done? There was a discount. There was a discount. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. So the discount of how much? 1,000. So because as a team gave a check of thousand, we cannot go and reduce it. So we'll have to adjust it in as a team's books. Okay, so that the balance that as a team will pay will be the difference. Do you get it? Madam, please go over. No, um, I don't. So that the discount, I told you the other day, that we didn't subtract the discount because that question we were answering did not suggest that we have to subtract. And I, I was telling the earlier group that if somebody brings a check to come and pay, will you ask the person to go back and go and take out the discount before you take the check? No, you will take the check and tell the person that, okay, may my discount. So the next time you're coming to pay, we'll adjust it and give you your balance. You okay, madam. Okay. Yes, madam. Ordinarily, if the question does not suggest that the discount has been already deducted and the person is supposed to pay the rest, you have to put the total figure. Again, for purposes of audit, accounting, you need evidence. If the person has brought a check for 20,000, if you take out the discount and you put 19,000 in the bank column, if someday there is an issue and they want to confirm, well, would they find 19,000 check? No. No. 
Do you get it? So once the person brings in a check of 20,000, you have to record the 20,000 and record the discount separately. But people, okay, were, madam. people were wondering why we shouldn't record the, that we should not subtract. And so I gave them some examples of where you may be able to subtract discounts. Let me look for the question. Let me hope that I find it. That's, that's what okay. I was talking about. So here, let's listen to this. So this one says, um, um, just a minute. Paid W Piat 160 by cash 155, having deducted five CDs discount. That one is very clear. You get it. And here you are paying cash. So you get there, they still take five CDs. That one you can. And so the receipt will show by cash. So here they say by cash 155. So you would show that you have paid 155 and the discount is five CDs. Then Madam another so, one. Madam, so like in that question, will you deduct the five from it? Because they said. Exactly, having, because that is cash. Having, Madam, but they said having deducted. That means they deducted it. So they say having deducted. So it means that you have already deducted and you want cash. So if you have given a receipt for the cash amount brought and it is after you have deducted, then you have to put the cash amount you paid. So and that means you record the 55 Ghana cities. Exactly. So most often when it comes to interest, you must be careful what the question says, how the question is put, rather than just saying that everyone will deduct. No. Okay, the okay, lady, madam, madam, if you have a question like maybe paid Kwame 60 Ghana cities, less discount, five cities. Uh -huh. That one has told you. Cash. That means you, you deduct. Exactly. But if you have a question like, listen, no, and Campbell pays us his account by check, deducting 2.5% discount. So the amount of the check is there, 273. So it means that the check he brought, he has already deducted the discount. So you put the check value. Always note that as for check, nobody is the value they bring that you would always put there. And then you put the discount. Okay. You get it. So, so, because so, for, so, so for this question, you won't deduct. You just no. write the amount and the bank account, and, and the discount they amount. They didn't talk about you deducting. Did they put any deduction there? No, madam. No. So they but just we put thought it. maybe because of the discount madam. bracket, so we, we have to deduct. Yeah. Because in accounting, when a figure is in brackets, it seems you have to deduct it. it. Yeah, it means deduct. This figure in brackets, is that, is, you see, you are mistaking it. And you people are coming with a mindset from secondary school. I told the other lady that you do things that are, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. You do things that make sense. And the question I'm asking you, okay, for those of you who have done accounting, as you go higher, you need to open up your mind. And the reason I'm saying that is that if somebody brings a check, in accounting, we need evidence. There is no way you can write a figure if you cannot find evidence for that figure. You are putting yourself in trouble. And take this from me. So if you go and write uh, 200, 2,000, less 1,000, well, how much check did the person bring? What is the value on the check? I'm asking you, Emmanuel, what is the value on the check? That means 19 instead of 20. No. The question <laughs> will answer you, what is the value on the check? The one that you brought. Yes. That's 20,000. So 20,000. Why would you go and take the discount out? When you take the discount out, what are you saying? When somebody comes and there is an error and they are looking for the value after taking discount, 1,000, you write 19. Will you find a 19,000 check in your things? If they are oh, looking for one. evidence to support that, will you find 19,000 check? I mean, you'll see. Will you find it? No, no. 
No. So I have brought check 20,000. I get and say that, let me pay, I'll give you discount. So you write my discount. The next time I'm coming to pay, subtract it, then I will pay the difference. It is different from this one that I am reading, which says that N. Campbell pays as his account by check, deducting. So here he has deducted, and the balance is what he has given us. That one doesn't talk about deducting. So why would he deduct? Yeah, madam, we understand. Now we understand. Okay, be careful how the question is coined, okay? before you do that. But it looks like your teachers have taught you every discount is deduct. You don't always deduct. Okay. Hello, madam. Yes, Karen. Madam, please, can we um, create um, discounts allowed and discount receive accounts as well? Um, yes, you can create it, but you can also leave it in the cash book because the cash book would have taken care of the transaction, but if you want to do double entry, why not? You can always create it. As for account, you can create as many as. So, madam, thank you, madam. You won't, you won't so create where a, would the discount, a, where a, would the discount course. account be? Will it be a general ledger account or it will be a personal account? A general ledger. A general ledger, a general ledger account. Yes. So why would you record this discount? Debit or credit? Debit. Debit. Why? Because you have recorded it at the credit side of ascertain. And so it is discount allowed. So it will be debited on discount account. Yeah, exactly. So it will be debited, so discount. Account and a general ledger. Mister, how much was the figure? How much was the figure here? Thousand CDs. One thousand. So you have to, thousand. You have to open the discount. That Calvin, I'll take you off the classroom. I'm sorry, madam, I'm sorry. How many times will you be sorry? Madam, so now you're opening the discount allowed account, right? Exactly. So I can open the discount allowed account. Remember that is also a general ledger account. Discount allowed account. Who did we give the discount to and the date? So what date As did we give? What date? 17 September. So we gave it to a certain amount. One thousand. One thousand. So double entry has been fulfilled. Any other? I just want to balance off one account so that we can see a free man. We also give free man a discount. Okay. So you let's finish with a certain. Is there any certain account again? Madam, no. Okay. So we want to balance off. It's almost six o'clock. We would have to close. Okay. I don't mind. I know some people don't mind staying, but others also do mind. So, so let's try and balance off. Okay, because we are not sure of which side is more, we will have to leave space. So, which side is more? This one is 50. And I'm the debit side. 50, 101,000. 200. 200. So it means that this one is 101, 200. And this side is what? 50, 70, 71. So what is our balance? 80. 80. 80. 
3,200. Balance carried down is what? 30,200. 30,200. 30,200. Yes. yes. Okay, so um, this is our balance. Oh, let me just... Okay, I'd have to clean it. I want to put it in color so that. So, mm -hmm. so this will be us at what? 38, 9, 20. Balance carried down. Thirty thousand two hundred. We'll change the color. This color is not. So, madam, when we are done, we put the uh, the balances into the trial balance. Aha. Uh -huh. You see, so this balance carried down from first October, okay, to become what? Of, First 10, 20, it will become balance what? Brought, brought down, down. Brought down. or brought, brought forward. Down. Okay, or brought forward, brought down. Okay, and so this account, is it a credit balance or a debit balance? Uh, it's a debit balance. No, credit. Who is saying credit? Mano. Uh, okay, madam, David, David, sorry. Okay, so <laughs> let me explain. Okay, so this is what happened. Wherever the balance brought down is, is the name that we'll give. So because the balance brought down is on the debit side, we say it is a debit balance. So if we are moving this to the trial balance, we will move it as a debit to the trial balance. Okay, if we were opening the trial balance, and the trial balance doesn't have dates, it's just uh, debit and credit. It's just debit and credit, and then the particulars. Plus. So, and details. The details. Trial details. balance. Yes. Trial yeah. balance. Yeah. Ask at when. 31st, 30th, 31st, 30th, 30th December, 2020. 2020. 30th September, 2020. Yes, so the trial balance will have, I'll see if I can get somebody who will do that uh, this time with you, but for now. Madam, I've, I've done it. Eh? Yes. Madam, we've done it. You've done it, but the other people, so if you people have done it, then I want you to come and do the physical and teach others for me. Who will volunteer to do that? <laughs> Solomon, Solomon. You don't know that the more you teach, the better. Ben. Ben. So here, if you have the debtors, because it is sales ledger, it is debtors account. So debtors into bracket who? As a team. Ascertains balance. 30,200. 200. Yeah. So, so Madam, and the creditors will go to the credit side. Exactly. Okay. okay. Yes. Nana Afun. Yes, Nana Kwabina. Anna Kwabna, your hand is up and you are not asking any question. Um, Louisa. Yes, Madam, Louisa. Madam, please, since we've already prepared um, the cash book, would it be necessary to open cash account or bank account? No, so we if you, if you if you not, I told you to go and finish the cash book and bring the balances down. 
So if you have those balances, all we have to do is to put cash here. Cash. Who's we'll put Who's the balance. Um, so to have for both bank as well. Yeah, cash yeah, and yeah. Bank. Yes. So if you have the cash balance, I'll just put it here, cash. Okay. Then we have bank. Those have debit balance. Even for the debtors, you should know that there are other debtors. So who are the other debtors? Joe. Joe. Joe and then yeah. we have who again? Freeman. 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 So we have Freeman as well. So they all should have debit balance. If you come to creditors, okay. Yeah, I can tell you who the creditors are. Hello. Um, it's who? Susie. Su Susie. Yeah. And Pao. Who? And Jay. Pao. Pao and Pao. who? And then who? Jane. 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 Okay. Jane. So then you can have your cash balance. You can have your bank balance. Bank. The discount to you can have the your discount. We have deduced capital, so you can have your discounts. Okay. And allowed. Discount allowed has a debit balance. And received credit balance. Uh, what about the assets? Office. Yeah. It, it, it will come at the top. Uh-huh. So you are just listing all the things debit and credit and making sure that at the end the trial balance should be equal the debit and the credit should be equal yes there was a hand up hello madam um it's yes. Nana Panda. yeah please i wanted to ask a question about um fixed assets if let's yes. say you have the purchases account and you mm -hmm. purchase a fixed asset like let's say um um let's say furniture and fittings like Will it be under uh, it or you just open a split account for the furniture and fittings? Okay, so um, let me say that the purchases account are for uh, Edu. Liquid assets. They're for liquid assets. If you are not ready to learn, others are ready. So the purchases and sales are normally used to account for the, your main core business. So if I am into this purchase and sale of water, anytime I go and buy the quantity of water, it is purchases. Anytime I sell, it is sales. But if I go and buy fixed assets, I'll put it under purchases. I'll open a fixed asset account. Are you okay? So madam, the, um, <clears throat> the purchases is just for the stuff you sell, like let's say your stock and inventory. Exactly, your stock of inventory. All right, thank you so much. Okay, good. That is a very thoughtful one. Um, Madam, so like the motor vehicle account that you open is under general ledger. Thank you, it is under general ledger. Okay. And what balance has it got? Debit. Yes, so you have to bring motor vehicle, debit balance. If we open the motor vehicle account, it's under general ledger. And that is a real account under general ledger. Okay, madam. So what I'll ask you people madam, to please, do. Uh, madam. Yes, I'm listening. Please, uh, the debtors, like, mm -hmm. is it allowed that maybe if you take a uh, ascertained amount, then you take the uh, due amount to then the free man, like, if you sum them, then you write the test, then you put the feed at it. No, balance. no. You they are can, different people. You can only put that total when you get to the financial position where you see one figure that is. But for this one, we want to know how much each person is owing us. Okay. But in the if we are preparing the financial statement, you would only see one figure that is. That would be the total that is that we have, okay? But okay, for the madam, travel, thank you. you would want to, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, 
I'm um, hello, madam. I'm um, accountant in my class. I like that. Yes. Serious accountants. Yes, Nana Kwabana. Hello, madam. Uh, yes. Please, um, I wanted to ask you so if, let's say, um, uh, there was drawings, like, let's say, stock for, like, let's say, the owner would do, like, some goods for mm -hmm. himself, for personal use. So it will be necessary for you to create a stock account. No, we can hit that against an account we are calling drawings. And, and so we would open a drawings of goods account and then the other entry will go against the owner. Because if the owner didn't pay, then it must go against his capital. That is what represents the owner's interest. So the, the two accounts affected will be just drawings and capital. Yes, so the drawings will be debited. Yeah, yeah. The drawings will be credited, capital will be debited. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so you would see that I know why people are asking because of the stock. All these will go against stock. Okay, so if we are preparing the stock balance, you would realize that what we have withdrawn is reducing our stock. What we have purchased will increase. What we have sold will reduce. But for now, we want to go slowly. Okay, so there are questions that will come that will have to open the stock account. Okay. Any other? So I know that it's been, it is not easy. Uh, so Curtis, the office furniture, let me put it there for you. So I'm going to look for the figure and put it there. Okay. Office furniture. If there has not been any purchase, you just put the opening, but the balance there at the end of the period. So continue. Okay. So what I expect you to do is to try and complete the trial balance. I will, hmm, I don't want to promise, but uh, let's look at which day is free that I can get everybody from the three groups. Okay, I would have to do, I know the, the this thing that's takes 300. That's I, no <coughs> <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, my Mondays are my only free days in the evening where you people can, then we can do it. Because if I have to do, the physical, it means I have to do physical for group, this group, do physical for this group, and do physical for this group. So, what I would do is that let's, let's commit one evening. I'm going to spare my time. Question set three. Ben, I think you have it. Let's circulate it. After trying this one, Let's see whether we can try our hands on question set three so that one of the days, I will take you through one of the questions from beginning to end. I, if I get somebody to who can do it, I'll let the person take